welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another photography video. In this video, sure, as I'm sure the title told you, and that's why you're here, we're going to learn how to tether the D600 into your Lightroom. Since I just bought the D600 and I thought, well, I want to uh, tether this right into Lightroom and um, be able to use it. And I even updated my Lightroom to 4.4 and guess what? There's no tethering for the D600. They did, however, just add the D7100, which came out much later than the D600. Come on, uh, Adobe, get off your butts and let's do some programming and you know, let's get the D600 included in Lightroom to tether. But since you cannot do this right now, what I'm going to show you is a way around it that makes it work. I spent several hours searching and digging around the internet. And nobody's had any of these YouTube videos up yet. So I thought I would go ahead and put one together to show you exactly what I did to make this work. All right, let me put the camera down here for a second. And let's switch over here to my computer. What you're going to do is download a free program called it's Sawfur or Sofort Build. Okay, it's a weird name. Uh, and I, I don't even really know how you would say that. So for its build, it's S-O-F-O-R-T-B-I-L-D. Okay. Or soft build, softer build, whatever. Anyway, it's Mac tethering or tethered shooting. And it says right here they just fixed it for the D800 and the D800E. And it now includes the D600. So it should now be fixed. So all these should work now just fine. So go ahead and download this software to your computer. Now it is Mac only. And I'm sorry uh, Windows users uh, and I don't run Windows. So I haven't really searched around to find a solution for you. Uh, maybe I'll be digging that to, to that a few weeks here because I have a few more plans to do more of the Windows tips and tricks there for you. So once we have this downloaded, we're going to go ahead and install the software. Now I'm going to show you how to tether into Lightroom. That's what we're working on here today. We're going to tether into Lightroom. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to go ahead and we are going to uh, get this set up and ready to go. So we're done with the browser. You downloaded it. You know where it's at. Go ahead and unzip it. Once you unzip it, there's nothing to install. Just pull the whole program right into your applications folder and you're good to go. Minimize this. We're going to go ahead and launch the program now. It would be in your applications folder. And then we just look for our S's here and we'll find it. Here it is right here. So I launched the application and it looks just like this. It's just a small tethering software, right? Very, very easy to use. Go to your preferences. And we're going to tell it what we want this to do when it when we take when we take a picture. What do we want it to do with the picture? All we want to do is save captured pictures to, I'm going to say other. And I'm going to go to my pictures folder and uh, make sure I don't have a tethered uh, capture in here because I've done so much of this. Maybe I do. Um, no. Uh, let's see here. We'll just call it capture. Right, capture one. Create that. All right, so every picture we take right now is going to fall into this folder called Capture One. Select that. It'll give it the file name, whatever. That's fine. We're not worried about that. After it imports, import Capture Picture into. Okay, you can Aperture or iPhoto. We're not going to do anything with that. Launch application is not running. Just uncheck that. Album or project name, that's if it opens one of these applications, so we don't really need that to happen. Because remember now, we're capturing this and pulling it directly into Lightroom. So that's where we want it to go. Uh, bracketing, we don't want it to do that. And we're not worried about any of that stuff. So everything here looks really good, and I think we're going to be okay. So what we need now is to set Lightroom up to watch this folder called Capture One. Because all the pictures are going to be automatically dumped into here, and we're going to watch and see if this works. So first, what I want you to do is, before you do anything else, get your tethering cable. Okay, this is mine right here. 
And folks, I'm going to save you a little couple more dollars. You don't need to buy these from the camera store. You could pick these things up uh, from anywhere. This is a, a mini or a micro USB head. You'll see which one fits your camera. And then I bought a USB extension cable, uh, like a 20 foot USB extension cable, and just put them together, put some black tape around them to, you know, keep them from pulling them apart. And it works fine. Oh. All right. So we're going to go ahead and plug this into our D600. And then turn your D600 on. And we'll see if it actually comes up in the software. Cancel that. And you can see here it does. It came up in the software. D600. It tells you what the focal length and everything else is here. Of the lens. Uh, it tells me the battery life. Everything's in here. So it's ready to go. You could even do capturing from here. We could do time capturing. Uh, so it's very, very nice how this software works. But all we're using it for right now is just for tethering. So what I want to do now is minimize this. And we'll just leave it down there. We don't need to see it. All these pictures are on the camera currently. And we're not going to import those right now. So let's get out of there. I'm going to leave the camera on. And what we're going to do now is... Let me just uh, bring this up around here a little bit so we can get that out of my way. Is Now we're going to set Lightroom up, and I'm going to show you how to do that. You want to go to File, Auto Import, and go to Auto Import Settings. Once you do that, we're going to go and we're going to pick a watch folder. And what a watch folder does is it's going to watch that folder naturally. Anytime a picture enters that folder, it's going to open it in Lightroom. So let's see if this will work. We know we went under Pictures and capture one and one thing I can tell you make sure when you set this up that whatever folder you choose for an auto importer must be empty all right make sure it's empty once we have that uh, going there we click on choose that's ready to go there the destination of where it's going to we don't really need a destination but I'm going to put capture two Now you can see once we have that watch folder, auto import is enabled. Make sure that is checked and it is enabled. You can even do developer settings and we could talk about that another time with Lightroom or check out my Lightroom class at jackstechcorner.com and then click on the online classes and you'll find Lightroom 4 in there. But we can use the developer settings if we had any created that we wanted to use and all that does is apply some custom settings to your picture when they're imported so that's how that works uh, once we have all that set up we're just going to simply click OK so we have that all ready to go so what should happen now is we should be able to start this take a picture and it should actually come up in our library Let's take it just to see what we got going on here Okay, now we'll see if the auto import feature is actually going to work. And there you go. We automatically imported that picture into Lightroom from the tethering software. So at this point, it's no different um, than the only thing is we have two pieces of software running, but it does work very, very well. Take another shot here. And we'll see if that one comes in. And again, just like it's expected to come in. So it does work very, very well. And basically that's it. It's very simple to do. Uh, just remember that website, and I will put it in the show notes uh, underneath this video. So click on more, and you'll see it there. Uh, you'll be able to download this program here. Um, and uh, start using this tethering software. And I'm pretty sure, and if he doesn't, I, I have to make me make contact with him here. He does have a donut, a, a donut. <laughs> he does have a donation button down here via PayPal. And I can tell you, this software that I was looking like, uh, Capture One and some of those, are two and three hundred bucks for the software. So, you know, if you throw uh, ten, twenty dollars uh, at the gentleman here for programming this, I'm sure he'll be very, very happy. And he'll keep continually updating it so we know it's going to work with future cameras. 
Well, folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of Jack's Tech Corner. And I hope that it enlightened you and I hope that it helps you there with your D600. Uh, mine is brand new. I just got it uh, Friday. It was delivered and I'm already learning a bunch of stuff with it. And it's pretty exciting to learn a new camera. So until next time, keep those shutters clicking, keep your editors editing, and I'll see you back here very soon on another Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.